Let's take a look at how we can deploy a printer using a login script or a .vbs file. The reason we do this is because we've done it traditionally this way for quite a while. We want a login script to run when the user first logs into their system and to install certain printers. Now we use a little bit of group policy with this, but it's not a true uh, deployment of printers with group policy. It's deployment of a login script with a group policy that then includes a printer installation. Well, to begin, we're first going to need to create ourselves the uh, script to actually map the printer. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is with a .bat file or batch file, and the other is with VBScript. And I'm going to show this using VBScript, because VBScript's been around for long enough now, and most of your login scripts, I hope, you've converted away from batch files to VBScript. Batch is left over from the old DOS and Windows 3.1 days. Okay, well, let's figure out what printer we want to deploy first. So I'm going to go to my control panel on my server here, and we see I have a printer here called the Dell Laser Printer 3100CN. We'll click Properties. We'll see what we share it as. Okay, Dell Laser. Yeah, we don't want to have users type that. Let's. We want to make that part of the login script. Dell Laser Jet 3100CN. Okay, and if we look at additional drivers, it should deploy to any with a 64-bit or a 32-bit OS. So we're good there. And, oh, just for fun, let's see if our, uh, let's do our other printer here. We've got a main office laser. Let's look to see which one this is. This is an HP LaserJet 4300. Okay, and we're sharing that as main laser printer. Okay, and let's see, let's see additional drivers. Now, we're only offering the 64-bit driver of this. We don't have the 32-bit loaded on the server, but the client might be able to pick that up because it's a pretty common printer. We'll see what happens and maybe use that as an educational experience for where login scripts can fail on you. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Well, we need to write the VB script code. Now, the easiest way to do this is to actually go to your server, and in my case, my server's name is win2008dc1. You can use either of your domain controllers. We're going to start with one, and I'm going to go to net logon. And the net logon share is where login scripts have been traditionally placed. And because they're available on all the domain controllers, and as soon as we store it on one, it's going to be available on the other domain controller through replication. So that way, if the client machine connects to either one, they'll get it. Now, we're going to need to right-click, say New Text Document, and we're going to call this, oh, uh, let's call it mapprinters.vbs. Now, unfortunately, that's probably got a .txt stuck on the end. So we need to actually tell our system here to show us the extensions, or if you want to cheat like I do, let's just pop out and let's do dir win 2008 dc1 net logon and let's do a rename win 2008 dc1 net logon map printers .vbs to map printers .vbs without the .txt on the end. And there we go. We just renamed it and if we look back here, it's now just a vb script file. Right click on it, we'll choose edit and that'll open it up in notepad for us. And our script is going to be pretty simple. It's going to take about two lines, uh, actually three if we want to do two printers. The first thing we need to do is basically set an object for the network to create object. Ah, object helps if I can type this morning. Wscript.network. And then we're going to do an obj windows printer connection that's our method and we need to do win 2008 dc1 and let's see our first printer we wanted was dell laser jet 3100 cn and if we wanted to do another one well we do obj network dot add windows printer connection win 2008 dc1 and we're going to say main laser printer okay and that we save that and presto. That's all it takes to put together a, a, a script that maps printers. Now, if we double click on that and click open, uh oh, didn't like something there. Didn't like in our line two character one. What didn't it like? Let's see. OBJ network had win 2008 DC1. Dell LaserJet. Let's see if that worked if we just type that path in. Win 2008 DC1. Dell Laser Jet 3100CN. Yeah, it's there. 
Okay. And let's try our other path. Hmm. You know what? Let's go try this from an XP station because we are running this on the same machine that it's already got. So let's let's go test it from an XP machine. Well, here I have an XP machine. Barney's logged in, and let's go to Win 2008 DC1 Net Log On. Let's see if my script is just wrong or if I really typoed it. Yeah, see, it worked just fine from the XP station. Uh oh, didn't like number three, line three. So it did deploy the first printer, because if we take a look at printers, we see it got the Dell, but it didn't like the other one, because we don't have a 64-bit driver loaded on that server, sorry, a 32-bit driver loaded on the server, and the client doesn't have one in its own uh, database of printers, so it can't get it there. But that's okay, let's go ahead and test again. We're going to delete the printer. Let's run the script. And sure enough, it did the first line, it did the second, but it didn't like the third line. So, let's go back to our script here on the domain controller. Let's edit this, and let's take away that printer. Remember I said this was going to be a bit of a learning experience for you? So we're going to comment out that line until we can fix that print driver issue. So we're going to put just a, uh, just a uh, single quote right there. Instead of a double quote, it's just a single quote saying that line is commented out. And let's add a wscript.echo printers have been mapped or been been connected all right now well we know that it didn't want to run right on here we'll probably get that same error we got before but remember that's because we are sitting on the domain controller that that's actually sharing those printers when we go to an xp station let's clear out our printer here and let's run the script printers have been connected there we go so it worked just fine for that user okay so now let's make it so that that runs when the user logs in instead of just when they uh, you know when we run it manually now if it just needed to be for one user believe it or not we could actually put it in their startup folder not really a login script that's just a startup uh, you know shortcut so you make a shortcut to that map printers and it would work for that one person you can make a shortcut on their desktop that let them map when they needed it. But if you really wanted to go out with their login script, we'll go back to a domain controller. We're going to open up group policy management. And let's go ahead and create ourselves a new group policy. So we're going to say new created GPO. And we're going to say this, the printer login script, printers via login script. Okay, we'll click OK. Now, in here, we're going to edit this. And we need to go, because this is going to be a user uh, item, because I want it when a user logs in, I want this to run. I'm going to go under poli user configuration, policies, and under Windows settings, we see here scripts log on, log off. Well, I want this to go as part of their login script. And now I need to add that script. So I click Add. And it's asking for the script name. Now, here's where policies uh, start to go a little bit deeper than what I really want to go on in this video, because the policies actually can have the login script stored directly with that policy. And if you look at this path, see how it's got a big, ugly path in here? That's the GUID for the policy, slash user scripts logon. But I don't actually want to use that one. I want to go up if I can as much as possible back so that I'm looking instead of this whole long path uh, let's see oh there we go let's go to folders see how we're buried deep in this uh, direct, this directory structure because each one of these represents a policy each one of these goods and these are all the scripts that have applied to that individual policy but I actually prefer to put my login scripts here up under the sysvol learn it first AD and then I'm gonna find a folder here called scripts that's not part of any given policy it's part of all the system and look at that that's where map printers is because that's what everybody sees is their net logon share where we created it initially so we're gonna choose map printers and so it's a learn it first AD the sysvol and if you remember the DFS chapter that looks a lot like a DFS path 
Sysvol Learn It First AD Scripts Map Printers. And we'll go ahead and apply that. We'll click OK. And we'll give it a couple seconds here to save. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK. And let's go have our user log out. OK. The user doesn't have any printers deployed. So we're going to say log them out. And now we're going to log in as that user. So Barney's going to log in. And if everything goes right, if that policy is out there and deployed, we should get a little pop-up telling us printers deployed because that was the last line. Now, remember, we may not yet see that policy because it does take a little bit of time with Active Directory replication. Let's look under printers. Yeah, nothing happened yet, but let's go ahead and do a GP update. The better thing to do would be wait about five minutes, but let's do a GP update. And let's do, after that, we'll do a GP result and see if, in fact, this policy is applying to Barney. Okay, Barney, yep, see, now Barney's getting printers via login script. So that's good. So now we'll log off one more time. So it just took a while before it was reading that that was a script he's supposed to have. Okay, here we go. There we go. Printers have been connected. And if we take a look at the printers and faxes, there it is. Now, once we figure out problems, or if we want to deploy other printers, we want to add a printer, we, want, we fix that problem with that uh, other one, we can just go up to any of our domain controllers, the net logon share, and we see that login script right there, and we can just edit it. We don't have to go back into group policy management or make any changes there. All we have to do is update this file. So if we want to take away that this uh, message at the end, we can comment that out. That way the user doesn't even see it. If we wanted to try to deploy it, maybe we want it to deploy to 64-bit ones, but 32-bit ones we won't worry about. We could put an on error, resume next, because we know that skip over this step if it does give us an error. And we can leave that line there for commenting later. And so that way it'll do that first printer, which we know should deploy everywhere, but that second printer, if it encounters that, and it doesn't have the appropriate driver, it won't deploy it. You could actually put that as the first line of your script, but for troubleshooting, I don't recommend putting that line too far up because, well, now we don't even know if it was working or not, and you don't know what steps or if there is a specific error, if it's giving you more detail on it. See, now if I run this script, because we have the on-error resume next, it just keeps going, and no results if it's done or not. But that gives you an idea of what a script-based deployment of printers looks like. And it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. But there is a better way to do it. In Windows 2008, they support deployment of printers using group policy through a new process of printer deployment. And I'm going to go shoot that video next for you. So if you're up there on the website, go grab the next video.